Welcome back to Man Cave AME Zion Church. Glad to have everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Excited to have everybody this morning. Y'all ready to worship? I think I'm going to put these things on the front so I won't have any technical difficulties in the midst of service. But I'm glad to be in the number this morning. Woke up in the middle of the night. And as I always remember the the older saints, the seasoned saints used to say that God wants to tell you something or when you wake up in the middle of the night you should, you're should, you supposed to be praying something you're supposed to be praying about and God is trying to speak to you and Lord knows he did. I just happened to be one of those people that sleep with my TV on as good or bad but uh, there was a, a minister, a minister that I truly admire and I revere who was preaching this morning, and I am thankful that uh, God does make us obedient to um, not only our elders, but to him especially, as um, I know that I am starting this morning in a more blessed space because I was able to listen to God early in the morning. May have lost a little sleep, but that's all right. What I gained is so much more than I lost, and I'm just grateful to be here today, and I just want to start the worship service off with this because we're going to worship God right where we are. We are going to worship God. And for those of y'all who have been following the North Carolina news, you know that many um, parishioners and churches have decided to open their doors this morning and go back into the traditional sanctuary. And we don't judge them. We do not. Um, we even now pray for the protection of our brothers and sisters. But we, Amana AME Zion Church, we choose to continue to listen to God for what he says to us. And right now he is still telling us to be right where we are. And God has never failed us. So we will continue to listen to him. And when he tells us to go back and gather together again, you will be the first to know because you will receive a personal invitation to come and join us in the fellowship and we are looking forward to that glorious day amen 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 but let us right now uh, call one another to worship and in the tradition of our church that means that it's time to set our minds on worship we are getting ready to go into a holy place to hear from a holy god and we don't need to have the cares of the wor world competing with god uh, so what I want us to do right now is just to be still wherever you are. Just be still and know in that stillness that God is still God. And let us bow our heads right now and we want to invoke the presence of Holy Spirit. Good morning, Father. We are so grateful to be in the land of the living today. God, we are excited about what you have for us and that's just not an assumptive statement we know you have something for us or you would have allowed us to sleep on so God our hearts are beating faster our souls are ready to be lifted and we are ready to bless your name today but as good as our intentions are we know that it is all moot if we do not seek the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So now, sweet heavenly dove, comforter, Holy Spirit, we come to you and we ask, we plead, we beseech you, come into our homes, come into this service, come into our hearts. Holy Spirit, you know what needs to be done. If someone needs deliverance, deliver. If someone needs to be redeemed, redeem. If someone needs to be healed, healed. If someone needs to be set free, set free. If someone needs to be saved, save. But let your presence fall. Let your anointing rest on your people and help us to give you worthy praise on this Sunday morning. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You can start praising him if you want to. Amen. It's time. It's time. So let's keep those minds of worship and 
Let's go into our opening song of praise for the month of May. Come Christians, join to sing. And we are going to sing this together. If you know by now, I'm going to ask you to find your devices or those hymn books that are tucked away on a shelf in the back corner of the living room. And the name of the hymn again is Come Christians, Join to Sing. And if you don't or if you can't find it, about every other line is Alleluia, Amen. So join in with us there. Amen. is gooder and gooder. Look, take a moment, invite somebody over, share our Facebook live page with somebody, type their name in and tell them, come on over here. We're having a good time in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that beautiful hymn. We have what, one or two more Sundays to sing it. What's today? The 17th, 24th. Yeah, we got two more Sundays to sing it. Amen. Hallelujah. So now let us um, put the brakes on the singing and now get ready for God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. And I'm going to ask those of you who have your Bibles or your devices readily available, if you would turn to Psalm 130, Psalm 130. And we are going to read verses 1 through 12 together. As I am reading aloud, you could read where you are. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. So if you have that version, read aloud with me. Um, but if not, read along. Um, the words, although they may be a little bit different, the meaning and the heart of what God is telling us is the same. It's just a different translation. And again, Psalm 130, and I'll be reading for your hearing, verses 1 through 12. 
and the word of the Lord reads, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Shoal, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger, it's but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy, joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, and I was dismayed. So to you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God, for the praisers of God, for the glory of God. Thanks be to God. It is now prayer time, and as always, we want you to submit your prayers. Um, if you would, submit them live right now and type them into the Facebook Live forum. We will read your prayers individually. We will pray over them. We even solicit the help of praying saints to pray with us during the week for those petitions that you submit to God. We know that this is a time when it's hard to even really find the words to pray because you don't even really know what to pray. But thank God for Jesus, our intercessor, who takes our little feeble words, who will take the faintest cry and he will wrap it in a beautiful prayer and he takes it to his father and places it at the foot of the, the throne and so don't worry about being fancy with your words do like David David Williams that is and just write pray for the Williams family continue to submit your prayers and Let's prepare our hearts even now to not only ask God for what we desire, but don't forget to thank him for what he's already done. There might be some prayers of thanksgiving out there. So thank God for what he has done in your life and how he has protected your family and how he has lifted you in a time when you would have been very content to sit in despair and if you need to confess to him as well now I'm not saying you have to put your confessions out there but make sure that you take your confessions to God because God loves a broken and a contrite heart and as we learn and as we repent and as we come back to that street called straight God knows that we are serious about this walk and he will equip us and he will be quick to answer. Before I pray, I just want to remind all of us, God will answer. He 
always does. Never think God didn't answer my prayer because you find yourself praying the same thing over and over. It seems like a situation hasn't moved. But even what we don't see, God is always working. His prayers, our prayers, excuse me, he may answer as yes, he may answer as not now, and sometimes God may answer no, but isn't that like a father? What father or mother out there would say yes to their children every time they came to them with a petition? We can't always say yes to our children because we know that what they're asking for isn't always what they need. Well, God is just like that with us. He will answer us. But when he answers, receive it. And then just ask for strength to accept his will, whatever he, his will is for your life. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come humbly before you right now. First of all, just honored, privileged to be in your presence. God, we know you didn't have to wake us up this morning. You didn't have to do it. But somewhere in your plan, you had our names written there. And we just want to say thank you, God, for one more day, one more chance, one more opportunity to get this thing right. You are awesome, God. You are mighty. You are powerful. You are so loving and so patient with us. And this is why we get up on Sunday morning. This is why we get up on Wednesday morning. This is why we get up every morning and first thing we want to do is just say thank you Lord because you are worthy to be praised God we have to admit we don't thank you enough no we don't we take you for granted sometimes and we forget that every good thing that has happened to us or that has come across our path started in heaven on your throne and we walk this way as if we did something to deserve or earn the blessings or the favor that we have received and forget to even stop and say, thank you, Lord. First of all, we're sorry. Forgive us, Father, because you didn't create us to be ungrateful. You created us to give you praise and to bless your name and to worthily magnify you and we fall so short we fall so short Sunday morning we get up and we give you an hour hour and a half and we feel like we've done something great and God we haven't even touched the surface so right now we just want to give you glory we want to give you honor we want to give you praise we want to bless your name we want to tell you thank you God Thank you, God, for the things that you have done, for the ways that you have made, for the doors that you have opened, for the diseases that you have blocked, for the minds that you have redirected, for the hearts that you have healed, for the love that you have showered. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because you have been good to us. And we do not deserve it. God, thank you for your forgiveness. And remind us, remind us at every turn what it feels like to be forgiven. And help that to stir us to be forgivers. There are people out there that we think have done us wrong. We, we have oughts against people and grudges and walls built up over $20 and over a secret that may have gone out there and somebody told our business and 
somebody didn't act the way that we thought that they should act or they didn't respond to our love or our giving like we thought they should respond and they didn't say thank you and they didn't acknowledge us and they didn't pat us on the back. But God, if you can forgive us for all those things and then some, please help us find it in our hearts to forgive those who we feel like trespassed against us. And God, we're human and we need your strength to do that. So we're calling on that today because we want to be obedient to your will. We want to walk in your way. But in of our of ourselves, we can't do it. Mm -mm, we can't do it. So right now we admit we cannot do a thing without you. But with you, all things are possible. And we thank you, Jesus. And so now, I dare not close this prayer without acknowledging that there are people people under the sound of my voice who have called on your name this morning. Some because I asked them to and reminded them that they could, but some have been crying all night. Some have been crying all week. We have had friends who have had to bury loved ones this week. We pray for them right now. A special prayer for our sister Tanya Simmons and her cousin Sabrina as Sabrina's mom was laid to rest yesterday. God, we thank you for keeping Tanya and Raquel and Thomas safe as they traveled all the way to Miami. And thank you for putting her in a place where she could be an encouragement, not just the location of Miami, but God, I thank you for what you've done in Tanya's life that would give her a heart like yours that wouldn't let miles separate her from loving. God, keep them protected as they travel back as well. God, there are some people who have been crying this week because they have been in situations where COVID has been all around them. Person coughing on the left, a person has a fever on the right. They've been on the front line, God. And I just, I ask a special blessing for those frontline people, those who don't have a choice but to go to work every day. A special prayer for Clarissa Barnes and her daughter and all those who have to be where they have to be so that we might be able to be safe and have what we need. The nurses, the doctors, the firefighters, the grocery store clerks, the veterinarians, those who work at the post office, God, we thank you for them, but we ask your protection over them. Yeah, God, some have been crying all week because the finances are drying up. The money is not coming in, but the bills are starting to show up again because governments have made the decision to open up again. God, we ask a prayer for that one who doesn't know what tomorrow is going to look like financially. I want you to just tell him or her right now to look over their shoulder and look how far the Lord has brought them from. And that if you did it once, you can do it again. That you love them too much to let them go hungry. You love them too much to let them be homeless. You said in your word that your seed will never be begging bread because you will not forsake the righteous. God, some have been crying all week because they have young ones, teenagers, who are graduating high school, and graduating college, and it doesn't look the same and it doesn't feel the same. And no matter what they try to do, they just can't seem to make that day as special as their child may have wanted to do. God, bless the children. Help them to understand that what's going on is for their good. Give the parents the fortitude to be able to be there for them. God, we it's easy for us to 30, 30 years down the road say, oh, it's not that deep, it's not that big a deal. You're still graduated, whether you get to walk across the stage or whether you get to put on your cap and gown. But God, for them, it is a big deal. 
God, we know that sometimes the little things are the big things. And so, God, we ask that you be big in their lives right now. Magnify yourself before these children, before these families. Be magnified, oh God, and let them know and remind the others that if they have you, it's really all that they need. That what they have accomplished through you, that's really all that needs to be said. And that you know the plans that you have for them. And they are plans to continue prospering and to bring them to a good and expected end. God, there are so many things I would like to pray. And I could pray long and I could pray strong. But even my words now are just feeble attempts for you to hear and to answer and I know, God, you don't need all that. You don't need a loud voice. You don't need a trumpet. You just need a heart that is bent towards heaven. So, God, now as all of the hearts under the sound of my voice are bent towards heaven, hear them, heal them, help them, hold them, hover over them, and keep them in perfect peace we thank you for listening God we thank you for answering and God some of us are hearing your answers right now before I close I just ask that you would give us an obedient spirit that we would not just take the word that you give through your manservant today and share it and drop it but that we would be doers of your word so that we also can be recipients of your blessings. God bless the man of God as he brings forth the word today. May he not take one jot or tittle away from what you told him to say, no matter how hard the word is. God, help him to break the bread as you told him to break it because this is the bread of life. And as we eat it, God, let us continue to chew on it tomorrow, the next day, and the day after that we may find favor with you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And we count it done. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes. Amen. And oftentimes when we're transitioning and getting ready for the word of God, um, I hear Pastor Atlas thank me for presiding over the service and for helping out with the praise, but I just want to thank God for him this morning, and thanking God for how he meditates day and night in order to receive a word for our souls and um, praying even now that God stir up what's inside of him so that we may be the better for it. Amen? Amen. Ready? Okay. Did you write this one? Okay. This is an original by Reverend Atlas.
His name is Jehovah. We lift Him high. We exalt His name. There's none beside Him, and there is none before Him. Oh, you're El Shaddai, you're Almighty. Jehovah Jireh provides for me. Jehovah Shammah, you're always there. Jehovah Rohi, for me you can. He's the El Shaddai. Jehovah Jireh. From the Lord. And I'm excited this morning <coughs> to share a little word from Psalm 30. From Psalm 30. And I just want to read verses 1 through 5. Psalm 30, verses 1 through 5. And it reads, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, and thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, yes. but joy <laughs> cometh in the morning. <laughs> Let us bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for being that matchless marvelous king but we know we can't make it without your word we feast on your word we live on your word we breathe your word Lord I pray now that you will speak to us a word that won't just entertain us Without a word that will help us realize, no matter what things look like, the joy comes in the morning. Yes, Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. I had a question for you. Just want to start out with this little question. Have you ever heard that old saying, This joy that I have, the world 
There we go. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Anybody heard that one? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. But, but, oh, you knew a but was coming. Don't take that from me. Now, <laughs> how many of you ever been in a situation when the joy that the world didn't give to you still seemed to be elusive? Oh, my. You ever been down, perplexed? Mm. Have you ever been confused? Mm. Man, look, I know that. I, look, I know God is not the author of confusion, but somehow, if we would just be real, we can all admit we found ourselves confused from time to time, and sometimes we find ourselves in a place where joy just seems to be elusive. I just can't put my hand on joy. Sometimes it comes from choices we've made. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you find yourself there just because this is just my lot in life. This, that's just how the ball bounced. And we find ourselves in a place where joy is hard to find. So today I just want to talk to you just a little bit about, look here, reclaimed joy. All right. Reclaimed. That means getting back joy. Because we know how we know how life can be. Sickness comes up out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Financial issues. You're trying to walk for Christ. And, and your marriage is on the rocks. You, 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 you go to church and there's church hurt. Anybody ever? Oh, Lord. Church hurt can, can, can cause joy to be elusive. Mm -hmm. Folk disappoint you. A virus comes through and disrupts everything that you used to consider to be normal. That's enough to almost cause joy to become elusive, difficult to get your hands wrapped around it, right? So what do we do <coughs> as the good saints of God? Well, some of us have mastered what I call faking the funk. Okay. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, we, we walk around in public like everything is all right. You know what I'm saying? We... we and we clapping our hands and waving them and, and running and, and we and, you know because somebody somewhere told us when the praises go up the blessings come down so okay. we think that somehow if I can just just praise them, praise them and maybe maybe some blessings will come and help get me out of this joyous state but it's bigger than that it's right. deeper than that Amen. And, and, and and so look. This psalm is going to help us reclaim some joy for real, for real, for real, for real. Praise God. Look, look, David was in a pretty bad place when he wrote Psalm 30. He, 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 he wanted to see how big and bad his military was. So he ordered a census to see how many fighting men mm. did he have in his army. And he found out he had 1.3 million men in his army. Man, oh, that, that's enough to make you start sticking your chest out. And that's exactly what David did. David began to think that Israel was winning battles and defeating their enemies based on the strength of 1.3 million soldiers and, of course, his great leadership. But... God didn't take too kindly to David forgetting who it was that was helping him. And God sent a plague mm. that wiped out 70,000 Israelites in just a matter of days. Oh, Lord. Can, can you imagine being the one responsible for 70,000 mm. people mm. dying because of your 
foolish ego. Mm. Mm. So put yourself in David's place. He's seeing folk dying. He's he, surely joy at that point is elusive. I can't put my finger on this joy. And look, David is a man after God's own heart. Oh, Lord. So the first thing I need you to understand, if you're ever in a place where joy seems like it's elusive and you just can't get your hand wrapped around it, you need to get to a place where you understand that joy is reflective joy. Look, the, this doesn't just mean you run to church and start singing real loud and shouting and sweating and, and falling all out. That's good. But but look, let your running and your singing and your sweating and your falling all out come from a place of reflection. Yes. Right? Yes, Not just yes. because you think this is what That's you're supposed what, to do. Uh -huh. No, Amen. no, no, no. Let Preach. your running and Preach. your singing and your clapping yes. and your playing and whatever you do, let it come from a place yes. of reflection. Because that's what David did. When he was feeling down in the dumps, David said, I will extol thee, O Lord. And extol means to speak highly regarding the virtues of somebody else. L look here. It means to commend or to applaud or to praise someone else enthusiastically. T to extol means to give credit yes. where credit is due. Yes. Are, are you with me now? Yes, sir. You know, banks do that, you know. Okay. Banks give credit where credit is due. <laughs> and where credit ain't due... <laughs> God give credit. <laughs> they, don't, they don't give no credit. <laughs> Look, they give, but banks give credit based on the credit worthiness of the person <laughs> that they're going to give credit to. In other words, credit is extended based on the ability to come through on what you promised. Oh, wait a minute. That's why you sign what's called a promissory note. You, 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 you promise and I'm gonna I'm gonna pay, pay you back, back yeah. when I say I'm gonna pay you back. And if I said it, that's what I'm gonna do. And so before the banks just start giving out credit, they run a credit check. They check your FICO score. And your FICO score helps determine, it determines. One of the determinants of your FICO score is your past performance. How did you do before? <clears throat> uh, what's that got to do with anything? Well, if we're going to give credit where credit is due, let's run a FICO check on God Come real on. quick. Let's check and see, is he credit worthy? Let, let's, let's check. Let's, let's go down the line and let's just check and see. It has God lived up to promissory notes that yes. he wrote in yes. the past. Mm. Huh? David said, I will extol thee, O Lord. You know why? Because, look, when I was down, you lifted me up. That's what it says. The word describes you as the lifter up of my head. You mm. promised mm. that you would lift my head. And every time I was down, when I look back, sure enough, there you were coming through on what you said you would do. Lord, your word declares that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you would lift up a standard against them. That's what you, your promissory note said. And, and David wrote, you know what? You did not allow my foes yes. to rejoice over me. Praise you God. met what you promised. What you said you would do, you would do. Yes. He said, in verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and guess God what? You healed, healed me. Him. Every, that's, past, that's, that's reflective. I'm looking back. Every time I got into a tight spot, 
Lord, you came through again. Lord, I, I'm beginning to see that you are credit worthy. Yes. Oh, Lord, you yes. brought my soul up from the grave. David wrote in verse 3, thou has kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. That's, 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 that's King Jamie's slavery. But that's, that's, you know. But in other words, you know what David is really saying right there? I should have been dead sleeping, sleeping in, my in my grave. But you let me see another day. Praise God. Yes. He knows by the time he gets to the end of verse 3, it was nobody but the Lord that kept him and got him out of messes time and time again. So after reflecting on that thing, David said, I've made up my mind to give you the credit. I will extol you. So let me ask you real quick. Who gets the credit for waking you up this morning? God. Who gets the credit God. for putting clothes on your back? Who gets the credit God. for keeping you sane in the midst of a lockdown? Who, who, who gets the credit for allowing you to have the activity of your limbs? And who gets the credit for protecting you from danger seen mm. and unseen? Who gets the credit for holding that marriage together Come for this now, long? Who, who gets the credit for that stimulus check? That, look, I know the president signed it, but... Who gets the credit for that thing coming in right now. in the nick of time? You know. Come, Come on, on now. There's a song Cedric Perry used to sing. I can't wait to hear him sing it again. He said, it says, you brought me through this. Yes. You brought, you brought me, me through, through that. that. And Lord, I'm grateful to you because you get the credit. If yes. you want to reclaim your joy, I dare you to just think back glory, on how many glory. times God came through for you. And when it looks like things are dark, you think back, you reflect on how good God has been. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. But then a strange thing happens right here. David realizes, I'm getting my joy back. I'm getting my joy back. But I'm not satisfied having my joy back. When I know there's some other folk who are still going through. So look at what happens when he gets down to, to this next verse. David says, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. In other words, David has reflected on what God has done because he understands joy is reflective. When you look back, there's that joy. But when he also understands that joy ought to be shared. Mm. Mm. Get all that joy and you're just going to keep it all to yourself. David started telling other folk in verse 4 who he's talking to changes. And now he's talking to the people. And it, look what he didn't do. He didn't get up in front of the people and start yelling at them, you ought to give God praise. <laughs> Come on now. Mm -mm, mm -mm. He didn't spend 20 minutes trying to, y'all need to make some noise. Uh-uh. You know what he did do? He encouraged them to sing. And he asked them to do it, look here, at the remembrance Reflection. of his holiness. There you go. You see, he, he, he invited the people after he realized, man, every time I think back on how good God has been to me, I need to share this with some other folk. So that, you know what? That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I've been in the dark. I've been in the deep. I've been in the place where tears were falling. But when I looked back mm. over my life, mm. I realized... Every time I got in that spot, here came God again. And so now I'm on Facebook Live trying to tell somebody yes. else, you need to sing. You need to clap. Come on. Based on the remembrance of his holiness. Mm. David had done some crying. 
But in the midst of crying, he found out something now. He found out something. He, he had to share that thing with some other folk. And look at one thing that he shared with the people. He said, weeping may endure, may endure for a night. Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I, you're going to have to spend some nights you gonna cry. with your pillow you gonna cry. wet with tears, aren't you? Yes, yes, you're going to cry. You know, there's a song we used to sing. It started out like this. It started out, trouble in my way. Yeah. Hmm. I have to cry sometime. Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever had trouble in your way? I'm going to leave you hanging right there just for a minute. Because you can't even finish the song if you don't finish the rest of the verse. Mm. David said, yeah, weeping may endure for a night. <laughs> it's one of my favorite words. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> stop. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> David said, but weeping may endure for a night, but you see, the key to reclaiming your joy is but. You reflected. You shared it, and in your sharing, you need to remind people, but, but turns the direction of a thing around. But changes the direction of a thought. But reverses course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, weeping may endure for a night, you may spend some time down and in the dark, and you may have to financially struggle, and you may have to endure sickness, you, even death. Loved ones may die. You may be, you may even end up diagnosed with COVID nineteen. Mm. You, you may lose your job. You may have difficulty paying your mortgage or your rent or your student loans. Your children are going crazy. They're getting on your last nerve. They don't understand why they have to stay in. And all of this. And, uh, 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 but one little word can flip the whole thing around yeah. if you just put a butt in there. But God is good. Weeping may endure for a night, but mm. joy cometh in the morning. What are you talking about? Look here. There's another old song we used to sing. Remember that same one? Trouble in my way. Uh huh. I have to cry sometime. It even went on to say, I lay awake at night. <laughs> but that's all right. <laughs> you know why? I had to, had to transition my thoughts because Jesus will fix it after a while. And I need you to see one other thing in here. If you look at this language closely, if you look at this language closely, he said weeping may endure for a night. May. That means it's not certain that you might even have to cry all night. It, 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 it may endure for two nights. It, 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 weeping may last all year. May. There's no guarantee on May. But he didn't say weeping may endure for a night, but joy may come in the morning. That's not what he said. He said weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Positively, absolutely, yes. certainly shall, without a shadow of a doubt, come in the morning. And how did he know that? Because every other time he found himself weeping, joy came. He spent months agonizing over all the people that died because of what he had done. But when morning came, there was joy. Israel Halton, in a song, and I'm about done now, in a song, Trading My Sorrows, mm -hmm. he reminded us that morning denotes the time when you wake up. 
So when you finally wake up and realize you don't really have it as bad mm. as you think you have it, wow. joy will come. When you wake up, when you wake up to the fact that it was nobody but the Lord who's been keeping you all this time and is going to continue to keep you, joy will come. When you wake up and realize that nothing can separate you from the love of God, joy will come. When you wake up and realize that all things are working together, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, joy will come. When you wake up and realize that your latter days shall be greater than your former days, joy will come. When you wake up and realize that he who has begun a good work in you yes. shall complete it in the day of Jesus Christ. That's right. When you wake up and realize, mm. joy will come. Wake up. Mm. And, and then you just have to look at how David ended this thing. And we're going to be out of your way. He got down to verse 11 and 12, and he said, you, God, you turned my mourning into dancing. You've taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. Oh, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Says the Lord had restored David's joy and turned his entire mindset around. Note this, though. He turned his mindset around. But 70,000 people were still dead. Mm. It, it was still David's fault. There was still folk hot with David about his foolish decision. He would still have to face ridicule and those to, from those who tried to tell him, David, this census you want to take, it might not be a good idea. There were still lingering implications and repercussions. But God, in the midst of the circumstances, did an amazing thing. He changed David's mindset in the middle of it. And you see, this. so this isn't just some cliche-filled little sermon about you know, just do this and you'll feel better. No, this is a sermon about how God is able to take your down and depressed mindset and clothe it in joy. Jeez. He'll replace a mindset that wants to sit around and mope and, and, and sackcloth come and ashes. On, and he'll, he'll replace that with a mindset that wants to dance. You ever seen somebody dancing when it just didn't seem like it was time to dance? That's because somebody, somewhere must have reflected on how good God is and shared that thing. And now their mourning has been turned to dancing. And if there's one thing I've learned about these Psalms, it's the fact that they point beyond themselves That's right. they point beyond David and his 70,000 dead folk Psalms point beyond the person who wrote them and they point to someone much greater every any Psalm you read you have to read it with the lens of Jesus Christ in the background because they point to Jesus because look they took my Lord Jesus and arrested him and beat him senseless. They mocked him all Thursday night. Friday didn't seem any better. They took his beaten self and, and put thorns on his scalp and took nails in his hands and pounded them in his feet. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. That was that was Friday. They, they stood there and mocked him as he took his last breath. There was a lot of weeping going on on Friday night. Mm. Saturday night still felt like night. Mm. 
No Jesus, no Messiah, no healer, no deliverer to call on. All hopes seemed like they were dashed. No idea what to do or where to go. Anybody been there? Mm. But that was an awful nighttime experience. But aren't you glad that's not how the story stopped? Because early in the what? Morning, morning. Mm, morning, Sunday morning, Jesus got back up yes, with all did. power. Yes, and now did. we can say with David, because of Jesus, I will not be silent. Yes. My life is going to be my worship, my praise. And when it gets rough, I can reflect and I can share and I can dance knowing <laughs> that morning is coming. I will not be silent. I, I will not. <laughs> I will not. He been too good to me. That's right. That's right. Praise him. a little song that we want to just do right here. There's a line in there that says, <coughs> you, Lord, you are worthy. No one can worship you for me. And I will not be silent. Worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my Receive my worship, all of my
We thank you. For tuning in this morning. Mm. And I, my, my prayer is simply this. That if, even if, it seems like joy is elusive. Just reflect, share, dance, and look to Jesus, who is the author of your joy. And if you don't know the Lord, we invite you right now to get to know him. The Bible says if you just confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And if you have any questions about that thing, Look, just look, drop us a line to Amana Prayer at Outlook.com and we'll we'll get back. We'll call you. We'll we'll lead you through. We'll, 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 we'll answer your questions. But I tell you, the only place you can get that joy is in Christ. <clears throat> For a church home, for all the not a building, things you've done, but a church home, a family, a, 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 a congregation of me. believers, and you feel the Lord calling you to connect with us no at a mama. I, I, I invite you to just, just type on the screen. For me. We want to join. <laughs> And then just send that email to Amana Prayer at Outlook. And we'll get with you. We certainly will. We certainly will. All of my worship. I think my mama told me when you said all you're supposed to say. Seed in my worship. Sit down. All of my worship. Done what I'm supposed to do. I just want to say, extend a very, very happy birthday to two strong men in the kingdom. Both of their birthdays fall on Monday, May 18th. One is our own Mr. Thomas Hood. So take the time and give him a call tomorrow. And then this one, my daddy. My daddy tomorrow will be 77 beautiful years old and I just want to wish him a happy, happy, wonderful blessed birthday. May you receive all the joy that you so freely give. I love you daddy. And the last thing, last thing before we sing finish strong and close on out, if you want to give a <laughs> donation to a Mama <laughs> Amy Zion church, just go to GiveLify app the GiveLify app, find the Mama Amy Zion Church in Knightdale, North Carolina, and tap Give Done. Or if you don't want to do that, just you can mail it in the post office box 1069, uh, Knightdale, North Carolina, 27545. And I see Mama said Daddy's on here just grinning, just grinning. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, if you want to join in, our closing selection is just our theme for Amana Church. See, Daddy, if you had Cash App, I'd hook you up, but ain't no way people to send you no money. Sorry, bud. You got to take that $5 I put in the mail for oh, you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> ah. Gotta have 
have endurance Cause it's a marathon I was born Shown up to win In pursuit of fame Until the end I'm going to have a strong 